So guys, I gotta say I'm pretty excited for this video. This is going to be an unboxing and initial impressions review uh, of a knife that I just got in. This is actually my first zero tolerance knife. It is the zero tolerance Z357, uh, 0357 model. Um, I gotta say I have never bought a zero tolerance. Part of that is because they are made by the same uh, same company that makes Kershaw knives. And while ha I have owned a couple budget Kershaws, I've just never really been a big fan of Kershaw. And I hope I'm not get gonna get a lot of hate over that. But I just, for whatever reason, uh, like I said, I've owned a few, they're okay. There's nothing specific I can point out. I mean, the, the steel that I had in those, they were budget. They weren't great, um, you know, they, they didn't hold an edge very long, anything like that. But I have other knives that don't have great steel in them. So it wasn't just that. It's mostly the design styles and cues that Kershaw uses it doesn't appeal to me visually. Um, they just never felt real great in the hand. Uh, and zero tolerance from everything I've seen, I've never handled one. I've never even held one. But they always kind of reminded me of that same thing. The Kershaw just didn't really care for the design cues that much. They never jumped out at me. And especially if you're going to spend the kind of money that you do on the higher end knives, like um, some of the Spyderco's Benchmade, Zero Tolerance, things like that. I just, I, you know, I feel like if I'm going to spend that kind of money, I want something really nice. Well, I saw a deal on this knife that was too good to pass up. So I went ahead and bought it. It was on Amazon. Now, one of the things you have to be careful with Amazon is getting knockoffs. So this this particular unboxing, unless there's something obvious that jumps out at me, I'm not going to go over, you know, checking in to make sure that it's the legitimate item. It was shipped and sold by Amazon, so I'm hoping that it is. Um, but I will have to do my due diligence to make sure that I didn't get a knockoff here. And if I did, I'd have to send it back. But hopefully that's not the case. It is one of the reasons, though, why I don't like to buy higher-end knives on Amazon. But again, the uh, they were running a, like, one-day sale on this thing. And so it was just a great price point. So I went ahead and bought it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and unbox it here and then we'll talk a little bit about it. Uh, so one good sign I can see here is this is one of the boxes with the like folding edges here. From my understanding, a lot of the knockoffs don't have that box. So that's a good initial sign. Um, let's see what we've got here. So as far as packaging goes, I got to say, uh, not all that impressed. Um, Civivis, which are much cheaper knives, come in much more impressing impressive packaging so you have your your little booklet of care maintenance warranty that kind of thing uh, and then it's just it just came bubble wrapped right it does come with a little silica packet here to keep the moisture out and there it is uh, that is the zero tolerance z357 i have no like i said no experience with zero tolerance so i can't even tell you what the proper way to say their models are. I, I noticed that all their models don't have names. They usually just have numbers, uh, 0357. Um, so that's what I'm that's what I'm calling it because that's what it says. Uh, it does look like a kind of medium-sized everyday carry. It's not going to be a larger knife, but it's not, not one of the really small ones either. It is a flipper uh, style knife. You can see here from the flipper tab that's on the back. So before I even get into it, I'll just go over some of the specs and then we'll open it up and we'll see, you know, see what I think of it. So I do know that it comes with the G10 handles here, black G10. Uh, I like the texturing on that. It's it's very like kind of grippy, but not in an aggressive way that feels like it's going to shred up a pocket. So that's good. Um, in fact, I think they did a really good job on the texturing. I really like that. Clearly it comes with a lanyard hole here. It does come with a deep carry pocket clip. Uh, that looks like it is reversible for left or right hand carry, but only carries tip up. You don't have the option of, of tip down carry. Um, kind of has a curved shape to the handle right there. Not sure how that's going to feel in the hand. Um, and the blade has this, what they call a black wash finish on it, which uh, I think it will kind of be good. I don't usually like black colored blades because no matter what you do, if you use them, they're going to start looking ugly in my opinion because you're going to tear up that finish this finish already has a pre-worn look to it so that may help negate some of that effect at least that's what i'm hoping um so anyway let's go ahead and open it up here well that's nice um it is it, it does have zero tolerance and also kershaw uses it what they call their their speed safe technology which is just a assisted opening 
mechanism. So when you when you hit that flipper tab, once you overcome that initial uh, you know hold there on the detent, once you get that going, it just flips out the rest of the way on its own. I don't feel like that's necessary, even on a high end knife. Um, you have if you have good action in this, a regular flipper is is so easy to flip out. In some ways, it's almost more satisfying than the assisted. Um, the assisted actually almost feels stiffer to open because you got to overcome for safety reasons. They have a little bit stronger detent there that you have to overcome and then it flips out. Still feels good. Don't get me wrong, but it's, it's nothing crazy impressive. I have a, a cheap, uh, at the time it was like a $20 Kershaw that feels the exact same way with the speed save technology. Um, so I don't think that that adds anything to a premium knife like this. Uh, in fact, I honestly probably would just as much prefer they have a smooth action and, and just leave off the uh, leave off the speed safe assisted opening. But that's just my preference. Um, looking at the knife itself, um, I mean it's it it it's kind of a weird shape, weird design. Again, it's, it's the thing with the zero tolerance knives. For me, they don't appeal that much visually. This is one of the better looking ones. I, I don't mind the, the shape and style too much. I do I do have to say I'm not a big fan of the curved uh, handle. It doesn't fit my hand very well. I have larger hands and where that should be going into your palm, I believe, like that swell should fit into your palm, it just doesn't for me. Um, my, my pinky tends to want to hang off the knife here. Uh, so it doesn't fit my hand real well. I guess, you, you can't really even choke up on it because that front finger can't come up past this point. There's no like choil or anything you can get up into there. So you kind of have to hold the knife that way. Um, it doesn't feel overly comfortable in my hand. And I have to say that belt clip feels like it's going to create a hot spot when I'm cutting. It's going to, it's going to start wearing right here on my hand. Um, so initial impressions for, for a knife in the price range that a zero tolerance is, I'm not getting that premium feel out of this. Um, I mean, it's nice G10. The, the G10 looks really nice. But otherwise, I got to be honest, I'm not overly impressed in initial impressions. Now, this thing does have good steel in it. It has the CPM uh, 20 CV. Um, I also have a bench made with that steel in it. It is a very good steel. And I think that I will like that. Um, my guess is, honestly, the one good thing I can say about it is since this doesn't appeal to me so much on a visual level... Um, but it does have a premium blade steel, there's a better chance that I'll actually use this as a hard use knife, which a lot of times I spend all this money on these nice knives, like my Spydercos and stuff. And some of them really don't get used much more than just opening packages, just because I tend to baby them because I put so much money into them. Uh, this one, since already visually, I'm not overly impressed with it. I may be more inclined to use, uh, use it in a way that you know, I'm not babying the knife. So that, that may end up being a good thing. It'll give me a better chance to test out that steel in a harder fashion than what I have in the past. Um, so speaking of the steel and the blade here, uh, so this is a three and a quarter inch blade, right? Uh, made out of the CPM 20 CV, like I said, has that black wash finish on it. So I do like the finish. If you're going to have a black uh, style knife, I do like this finish, kind of that worn look already to it. I think it'll kind of hide and mask some of the scratches and wear that'll happen naturally. Supposedly, Zero Tolerance lists this steel at a hardness uh, HRC rating of 60 to 62, which is a pretty hard um, rating. So, uh, of course, I don't know yet that yet. I haven't used it, but hopefully that is the case. It is a liner lock. Um, that liner lock is not super deep engagement there and there is no real cutout there's a tiniest bit of a notch right here but very little cutout for your thumb to be able to access that some people really have a problem with that with liner locks that don't have a deep cutout on the opposite side there so that you can engage that liner lock with your thumb i personally have never had an issue with that um reaching in there with the the kind of the tip of my thumb my, my thumbnail that has never been an issue for me so i don't have a problem with that um it doesn't really bother me, but some people that might. So just be aware of that. Uh, you can see here that you do have a full length backspacer here. Looks like this one actually has some kind of a bubble or blemish on it. I'm not sure what that's that's from. Um, 
yeah, overall, uh, again, just kind of going over all that stuff one more time real fast. We'll go over what we have here. Overall length is just a little over seven and a half. They have it listed at 7.625 inches. Uh, you have the three and a quarter inch blade, uh, the black G10 scales with fairly decent um, texturing. You've got the blade made out of the CPM 20 CV, which is a great steel for a pocket knife. Uh, it is a liner lock. Um, not super deep engagement on that, no jumping or anything on the liner lock. You do have a deep carry clip, which I like, but it is only reversible for left or right hand, not tip up, tip down. Um, it's got the speed safe assisted opening. And overall, it is a fairly light knife. I don't feel like it's very heavy. They have it listed at 4.3 ounces. That's probably right. I mean, you know, I'm no expert in it just by feeling, but it, it's not a super heavy knife. Um, you do have a little bit of jumping on the back right here that you can kind of rest your thumb on when you're cutting. I feel like with the belly on this blade, it probably will make a pretty good slicer. Um, it looks like it has a flat grind up to, you know, right up to here and then a little bit of a swedge on the back. I think that'll make a pretty decent slicer. Now, just feeling it here. And I just checked it out on my arm. It will shave. It's shaving sharp. Um, so the blade does come from the factory able to shave right out of the box. So that's a good thing. Um, you got a very sharp point there, that almost needle-like point that you get. Technically, I think they classify that as a drop point, but um, style blade. But overall, I mean, I like the knife, you know, all right. I'm not a big fan of the aesthetics. I'm not a big fan of the ergonomics on the grip. For my hand, they're not that great. I got to say, so price point on this thing, guys. Right now, Typically, you can pick this thing up for right around $175, $180, um, maybe up to $200, depending on where you're looking. The reason I picked this thing up is uh, there was that that sale that Amazon did. I think it was only up for one day. Uh, it's like they knew I'd been looking at it. And uh, this thing was on sale for uh, $127, I think it was. So considering it normally sells for 175, 180 for the 127, I did go ahead and pick it up just because I've never owned a zero tolerance, never handled one, wanted to get my hands on it. I gotta say the reason I'd never bought one is because I expected them to be similar to the Kershaw and I'm not a fan of Kershaw's, um, even though I own a couple. This exactly lived up to my expectations. Um, would I spend $200 for this knife? Me personally, no, I would not. Uh, I know I'm probably going to get a lot of hate because there are a lot of people who just absolutely love the zero tolerance. I'm not stating anything about the quality of the build. I mean, from what I can tell, everything looks pretty good. It's fairly well centered. Uh, it opens and closes no problem. I'm not noticing, other than that little bubble in the backspacer, which again, I'm not sure what that is. I'll have to look at that a little closer later. I don't even know if I can get it in the light, but there's a little bit of a like a bubble right there in the, I don't know, I assume that backspace or some kind of a plastic or nylon synthetic material and, and it looks like something happened there. Um, but really guys, I, I mean, first impressions, like I said, everyone has their own, their own idea of what makes a nice knife or what appeals to them visually. Um, Spyderco's have had to grow on me. I, I didn't originally like most of Spyderco's designs, and honestly, I still don't like a lot of them. Um, but I love the Paramilitary too. That one has really grown on me. Um, there's some other ones I'm looking at maybe getting a Shaman at some point. I kind of like the design of that knife as well. Um, so, you know, I, I've got a Manix, uh, the the large ver extra large version of that. And I like it all right. It's a little bit too wide, honestly, in the pocket. That's my big complaint with that one. So I've kind of had to grow into Spyderco. Maybe eventually I'll start growing into Zero Tolerance. But just again, this is only a tabletop first impression unboxing. First time I've ever even held a Zero Tolerance. And my first impressions are, this is one of their cheaper models. Maybe their more premium ones have a different feel. I don't know. But when you're talking about $200, $250, $300 for some of their knives, I just, I don't see anything about this that would indicate to me that I'd want to drop that kind of money on a zero tolerance knife. So uh, I am ready for the hate uh, to come out on that, that review, but that's my unboxing and first impression of this knife. We'll have to see how I like it after I've used it a little bit, what my thoughts are, but just wanted to go ahead and put an unboxing video up there for you guys and kind of give you my first impressions on it. All right, back with just a quick update. 
I just wanted to basically let you guys know that it didn't take me long to decide that this knife really just wasn't for me. Uh, it was well built and everything at the price point. It's a, you know, it's a good deal if you're trying to get into zero tolerance um, and you can get in at that price point. Uh, but for me, the ergonomics and everything, uh, the way it looked, felt, felt my hand with the larger hands. Maybe if you had smaller or medium sized hands, it just was not very comfortable in my hand. So I did end up sending it back and uh, then use that money toward the purchase of this knife here, which I will, at the end of the video here, I'll have a link to my review of this knife. It actually did have its own uh, set of issues as well. This is a Spyderco Shaman uh, Blade HQ exclusive made in the CPM M4 with the micarta scales. Uh, but overall, I did end up deciding to keep this knife in spite of some of the flaws, even though it actually had more issues out of the box than the Zero Tolerance. Um, I like the way it feels in the hand so much better. Uh, I like the ergonomics, the look, everything else about it so much more than I did the Zero Tolerance. So uh, I did decide to send the Zero Tolerance back, uh, use that money uh, toward purchasing this knife here. Uh, so just in case uh, anybody was wondering about that, uh, but again, if you're looking to get into a zero tolerance knife, uh, this is a good one to start with as far as price point and everything. As far as actual build quality, I didn't really have any complaints. Um, it just it it just wasn't for me. Uh, it didn't take me long to figure out that it wasn't it wasn't a knife that I was ever really going to be that thrilled with. So I did send it back. Uh, like I said, if you want to, you can check out the um, check out the video here, the review for the Spider Co that I purchased instead. Uh, and if you're enjoying my content, if you just want to go ahead and like and subscribe, uh, that would help out as well. Thanks.